to make a confession this morning. I hate yard work. And my mom hates that about me. I hate yard work. I hate mowing. I hate trimming bushes. I hate gardening. I hate everything to do with yard work. And there's a very simple reason why. No matter how much weed killer I spray, no matter how much weed killer I've been down in my grass, the weeds keep coming back, and they keep coming back in greater number. Maybe you've had that happen in your own front yard. But why does that happen to us? Why do we always seem to be dealing with weeds in our front yard? Why do we seem to be dealing with weeds everywhere we go? Well, I think one of the reasons we always seem to be dealing with weeds is we never really deal with the root. We never deal with the heart of the palm. And so often it's that same way in our own lives. That when we look at our own spiritual lives today, we never deal with the heart of the problem. We struggle with anger, so we avoid situations that make us angry. We struggle with lust, so we install software like coveted eyes to keep us from lusting. We may deal with all sorts of sins and all sorts of temptations and all sorts of problems with our in our life and our spiritual lives. And we can even try all sorts of ways to fix those problems. But we always seem to fall short. We always seem to fail. And why is that? Because the heart of the problem is the problem of our heart. That's why we spent so much time in the last couple weeks, last couple months, talking about the heart. Because if we are going to live with purpose for God, that's our focus this year, we have to deal with the heart. Because if we're not willing to deal with our hearts, we'll never be able to live with purpose. That's what happens so often in our lives. We never get down to the root of the problem. We never deal with the heart of our problem. We treat our sins and our temptations of all sorts of behavior changes, but that never really works. Because we never deal with the heart. And that's what makes Proverbs 3 and 4 so powerful. Because it gets at the heart of all of our struggles here in Proverbs 3 and 4 that Solomon gives us three simple instructions. Three simple instructions that will help us guard our hearts with purpose. And that's going to be our focus for this month. So guarding our hearts, protecting our heart is so important for us because so much of our walk with God involves protecting our heart. And if we really get down to it, if we really read Genesis to Revelation this morning, won't. But if we were to read Genesis to Revelation, one of the things we were to see, I think, was that God really cares about the heart. We would see God over and over and over and over again talking about the heart. And if God keeps mentioning that the heart is a big deal to Him, don't you think it should be a big deal to us today? And that's why I think it's Proverbs 3 and 4. So, so, so it's here in Proverbs chapter 3 that Solomon is sitting down with his son and he's giving his son some advice before he leaves the house. Maybe you're, you're a father and you've had that conversation right before you drop your son off at college or your, your son gets married. You have that conversation like, okay, son, you're about to be on your own. You're about to be paying your own bills. Here's the cell phone bill. Here's the rent bill. Here's the electric bill. Here's what you do. You have those difficult, tough conversations. That's what Solomon has with his son here in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Let's go ahead and read that text for us. My son, Solomon says, don't forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commands. For they will bring you many days, a full life and well-being. Those are those are things a lot of us have probably shared with our sons at some point in our life. Maybe we've shared it to our daughters too when we're dropping them off at college or they're going off to get there. We have that difficult conversation with our kids. That's what Solomon's ha having here in the text. And he tells them basically, look here, everything I'm telling you, everything I'm about to tell you, it's for your own good. It's for your own benefit. I want you to have a long life. That's what every parent wants. And that leads uh, Solomon to tell us Sunday there in verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And do not rely on your own understanding. This is one of those texts that we go to often because it is such a powerful text. 
But it's also a challenging text because it tells us the first instruction that Solomon wants us to know here in our lives if we're going to guard our hearts. And that's we need to trust the Lord. You know, there are times in our lives where we don't trust the Lord with all of our heart. There are times in the life where doubt creeps in. Temptation comes. There are times in our life where we sin. That's what happens when we fail to guard our heart. That's what happens when we fail to trust God with all of our heart. In fact, if I can say this this morning, the root of all sin is really failing to trust God with all of our heart. I can't help but think of Eve here in Genesis chapter 3. God had given her a very simple command. All she had to do there in Genesis chapter 3 was trust that God would provide for her there in the garden. That God had his best, her best interest in mind there in the garden. And yet, what do we see? Eve didn't trust God. That's what happens when we sin. We fail to trust God with all of our heart. And so often we like to tell people to trust God with all of their heart. We like to make sure that we ourselves, we like to think that we're trusting God with all of our heart. But think about what that means for a second. If we're going to trust God with all of our hearts, that means God and God's ways must be guides. How in the world can we do that? How can we let God and God's ways guide us? Look here in verse 6 what Solomon says. In all your ways know him and he will make your paths straight. That's how we can do it. The trusting the Lord with all of our heart means letting God guide all of our decisions. That means we trust God in what he says about dating and marriage. That we we trust God in what He says about money. We trust God in what He says about seeking Him first. We trust God in what He says about raising children. Trusting the Lord with all of our heart means we obey God in everything. Even when it doesn't make sense to us. Even when it may be painful to us. I think about Jesus there as He was approaching his death and his burial and his resurrection. There, as he prayed to God, what did he pray to God? Not my will, but yours be done. Jesus trusted the Lord that God had his best interest in mind. He trusted God and he did his will. Guys, that's what it means to trust God. It means to do his will in everything. So if we want to guard our hearts, if we want to live with purpose, we need to look at the three instructions that Solomon gives us there in verse 7. Rapid fire instructions, if I can say it that way. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and, and turn away from evil. Three simple instructions that we can show how much we trust God. We can show we trust God by not being wise in our own eyes. We can show that we trust God by fearing the Lord in everything. We can show that we trust God by turning away from evil. That's how we can guard our heart. That's how we can live with purpose. But the next chapter over, Saul is continuing to give his son that, that fatherly advice. And this advice has to do with more what we pay attention to. Look there in verse 20. Solomon chapter, uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 20 where Solomon says, My son, pay attention to my words. Listen closely to my sayings. Don't lose sight of them. Keep them within your heart. We've seen that before. <laughs> For they are a life to those who find them and help to one's whole body. The second instruction that Solomon gives us here in the text is that we need to focus on God's work. You know, every day we're bombarded by all these messages that want to our attention. And some of these are good messages. Or text messages from friends saying, hey, thinking of you. Text messages from our spouse saying, hey, I love you. There are Facebook messages from people that we haven't seen in a long time saying, how's that thing's going? And we love those messages. We love getting those messages because we know they still care about us. But some of the messages we receive on a daily basis aren't so good. They mean, quite frankly, very distracting to us. Maybe we've sat down to read our Bibles. And we have our phone next to us because the phone's never more than an arm length away. At least that's the way it is for me. We're sitting down to read our Bible and the phone's over there and it dings. And we look over and we've got a Facebook message. 
And dings again, we got another Facebook message. And before long, we spent an hour messaging and chatting with our friends. And we never read our Bible. Right. Oh, I'm, by now it's 9.30 and it's too, too late for me to read my Bible. I'm already half asleep. I better just go ahead and go to bed. I'll catch up tomorrow. Right? We lost sight. We've lost focus on God's Word. And my computer has this really awesome feature. I love it. It's one of the reasons I chose this computer. It's called Focus. That all I have to do at any point in the day when I really, really need to focus is go up there in my computer and push a button. And all those notifications, all those text messages, all those calls, all those messages, I don't get them. I can just focus on what I need to focus on. It's a really cool feature about my computer. Sometimes we need to listen to what Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 20, because I think that is what Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 20 through 22 is trying to teach us. That sometimes we just need to focus on God's Word. And this is so important for us to remember. Because some of these messages that we get on a daily basis are trying to get us to think or to act in a specific way. Maybe even go against what God's Word has to say. Over the last month or so, we've been bombarded by messages. You can't turn on the TV without being bombarded by some message about pride. That every company in our nation right now seems to be wanting us to adopt this pride mentality to celebrate things that God doesn't want us to celebrate, to celebrate that alternative lifestyle. Those companies, those messages are trying to influence our hearts and our minds. Guys, that's how Satan works. Satan sends us messages. He sends us temptations to influence our hearts and to influence our minds. To pull us away from God's word. And, and those temptations are deceitful and destructive, but they're also very subtle. Sometimes we don't even realize it. They come in the form of the sitcoms and the TV shows and the music and all the things that we watch and listen to. Because Satan knows what we see and what we hear it goes into our heart. He knows that every day that if we're tempted to give our heart to the things of this world, we will. And so that's why Solomon's advice here is so important for us, that we need to focus on God's Word. Because it's so easy for us to lose sight of God's Word. It's so easy for us to get distracted. It's so easy for us to leave our hearts unguarded and be captured as spiritual POWs on a war with eternal consequences. When all we needed to do on an everyday basis was to focus on God's Word. But I think this requires a little more than just a few moments doing our daily Bible reading every week. There's a little more time than taking time on Tuesday night to do our Bible class lesson for Wednesday, Wednesday night. It takes a little more time than making sure that we're sitting in a church pew on Sunday morning. You know, we were gathered on Thursday night just to talk about how we can study the Bible more effectively. And I think there are a lot of ways we can. There are a lot of things we can do to focus on God's Word. And one of the things that was brought up on Thursday night is we can write down the text for our Bible reading. Someone there writes down, physically writes down, I didn't know people do that, but they physically write down the text for the Bible. And that helps them prepare. It helps them internalize the message. That I, I get that. Maybe we do our daily Bible reading and we pray based on that daily Bible reading. Maybe we, we take notes during the sermon and we think about the sermon all week. Maybe we work on memorizing Scripture. I can remember when I was a kid, we had memory verses that we had to do. And my favorite verse was, Jesus wept and prayed without ceasing. I, those are the easy ones. Those are the favorite ones because if we got 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 and John 11... We knew we were good. Those are the fun ones. Maybe we need to work on memorizing the Scripture. <coughs> See, if we want to focus on, if we want to guard our heart, we need to focus on what God's Word has to say. I want to think about Jesus when He was tempted. When the devil is trying to get our Savior to pull away, when, he, when he's trying to get our Savior to walk away from God's plan for His life. How did Jesus respond when He was tempted? 
He responded with Scripture. He focused on God's Word. And how was He able to do that? Why was Jesus, our Savior, our Lord, our Master, able to respond with God's Word? Because He was focused on God's Word every day. That's the mindset we need to have, too. We need to focus on God's Word. That's how we can guard our heart. And that leads us to our third and final instruction that we see there in Proverbs 4 and verse 23. We'll read to the end of the chapter. Guard your heart above all else, for it is the source of life. Don't let your mouth speak dishonestly. Don't let your lips speak deviously. Let your eyes look forward. Fix your gaze straight ahead. Carefully consider the path for your feet and all of your ways will be established. Don't turn to the right or to the left. Keep your feet away from evil. The third and final instruction that Solomon has for us is to guard the heart. And this is one of those verses that is so key to understanding really the, the entirety of the book of Proverbs, but also if we want to live for purpose, we really need to focus on this verse, that we need to guard the heart above all else. The heart is key. Because everything we do as the people of God flows from the heart. But when we see that word there in verse 23, guard your heart above all else. When we see that phrase, above all else, what comes to your mind? For, for me, when I see that phrase, above all else, that means priority. That guarding my heart is the number one priority in my life. I think Psalm is teaching us that guarding our heart is the most important thing. There is nothing we will do on this earth more important than guarding our heart. It kind of builds on the idea we saw in Mark chapter 7 a couple of months ago. I know you remember that lesson from Mark chapter 7. I think it was back in April. You remember it like it was yesterday. But there in Mark chapter 7, Jesus gets to the heart of the problem. That is our sin there at the very end of the chapter. And he says, out of the heart come all these sins, comes all these evil there in the text. So guys, that's why we guard our heart. Because we know out of the heart come all of our sins, come all of our temptations. I think this means that guarding our heart isn't just a mental exercise. Solomon tells us there in the text three very simple, practical ways we can guard our heart. Look there in verse 24. He tells his son, don't let your mouth speak dishonestly. Basically, Solomon tells his son to watch. That should be watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Guys, we need to watch. We need to watch what comes out of our heart. Because our struggle with anger and gossip and deceit aren't just problems with our tongue. They're ultimately problems with our heart. And yet so often when we try to deal with our tongue problems, that anger, that, that um, malice, that deceit, we try to treat those problems as just tongue problems. But they're not. We need to fix our heart. And so if we're going to try to fix our heart, we're going to try to fix our tongue, we need to see a spiritual cardiologist, not just a spiritual tongue doctor. But the second instruction, the second way we can guard our heart, is found there in verse 25. Let your eyes look for, fix your gaze straight ahead. We need to watch our eyes. And so much of our walk with God, so much of our struggle with sin stems from what we see and desire. Earlier this month, or I guess it would be early last month, the first Sunday in June, we looked at the life of David and the fall of David. And why did David fall there in 2 Samuel 11? It was because of his eyes. It was because of something he saw. That he looked out from his roof and saw Bathsheba. I think if David never saw Bathsheba, his life would have been a whole lot different. David failed to watch his eyes, and it cost him dearly. The third instruction is found there in verse 26. Carefully consider the path for your feet. That third instruction, that third way we can guard our heart, is to watch our path. 
Solomon warns his son to avoid the way of the wicked earlier in the chapter. And now, once again, he says, watch your path. Don't go down the way of the wicked. Because Solomon realizes the path we choose makes a big difference. Where we fix our minds also determines that path. And so he tells his son, please, son, stay on the path. Don't turn away from God. And all of this choices, all of these choices that Solomon's son is going to have to make, all those choices to get in the heart. That's what makes guarding our hearts such a big priority in our life. But this also means we need to watch where we're spending our time and our energy because where we're spending our time and our energy may reveal where our heart and our eyes are focused. Guarding our hearts isn't a passive exercise. It challenges us, I think, to consider everything in our life. And yet so often in our life when we're dealing with sin, we're dealing with struggle, we try to make all these cosmetic changes without actually changing our heart. But Jesus did not come to earth, live and die so we could call, be called to change our habits. But Jesus came to change our heart. And remembering that Jesus came to call us to change our heart should call us, could cha should challenge us to do everything in our power to guard our hearts. Because only those who guard their hearts will enter the kingdom of heaven. Maybe you're here today and you haven't been guarding your heart. Sin has crept in. Temptations have come in. And your heart has slowly but surely been pulled away from God. And you're ready to make a change. You're ready to start guarding your heart. We would love to pray for you. We would love to pray with you. Pray for strength. We'd love to find ways to help you watch your eyes. To watch your path. To watch your heart. So you can enter the kingdom of heaven. But never, maybe you've never gone down You've never begun a path of following Jesus. You've never watched your eyes. You've never cared about your heart, but you're ready to start doing that today. We'd love to help you get a clean heart, a new heart for you, by going down to the waters of baptism, rising and being delivered. If we can help you with anything, please let us know. Come together.